Lovely, lovely, lovely. Nice day out there today. The sun is out, but it's cold up here in Woodstick, Illinois. Good morning. It is still morning. It's 11.51. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures. Please read along with me, word for word, verse by verse at the scriptures we will be looking at today. Please read along with me. Be a Berean. Search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. You read uh, any today? Read any scripture today? Why not? Hmm? Read along with me. Be a Berean. Okay? Read along with me, because guess what? I make mistakes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And sometimes the mouth goes quicker than the brain. So please, be a Berean and search the scriptures daily whether these things be so. Read along with me. Today <laughs> is the 24th. The 24th. And on this very channel that the Lord hath given, um, have done several videos, I think, at least at least one or two, um, where we address this nonsensical thing known as Black Friday. <laughs> and today, in my devotional reading with our Lord, came to this 24th proverb. Because today is the 24th. <laughs> Native American Heritage Day today. According to that calendar. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to have some expository here. I'm going to touch on some things. I'm just, I'm just going to share with you what the Lord shared with me today. Okay? So, Proverbs 24. We're going to be reading on to verse 9, and we've got some stops to go along the way. And read along in the authorized version. Whoever you are calling yourself Mark, I think I know who you really are. <laughs> I think so. I think so. Um, the Lord rebuke you. The Lord rebuke you. All right. All right, the Lord rebuke you. You don't know what you're talking about. Okay? Anyway. Proverbs chapter 24, verses 1 and 2. Be not thou envious against evil men, neither desire to be with them. Don't be envious at the wicked because they prosper in their ways. Don't be envious of what they get because their God, their Father, the little G God of this world gives them uh, their heart's desire. For their heart studieth destruction, and their lips talk of mischief. Psalm 10. Psalm 10. And this is synonymous with the day like today, here, especially here in America. Psalm 10, verses 1 on verse 7. Why standest thou afar off, O Lord? Why hidest thou thyself in times of trouble? The wicked in his pride doth persecute the poor. Let them be taken in the devices that they have imagined. For the wicked boasteth of his heart's desire, and blesseth the covetous, whom the Lord abhorreth. You know what you do if you haven't done this already? You take your, you take your little sharpie gel, or you take your little pen. You mark that, okay? You mark that verse 3. You mark that verse 3. Our Lord abhorreth. Okay? Abhor is to have extreme hatred. Okay? You got hate. You have despite. <laughs> uh, loathe and abhor are kind of somewhere in the same category or whatever. 
But if you abhor something, you have extreme hatred for it. So the wicked boasteth of his heart's desire, and blesseth the covetous whom the Lord abhorreth. And today they call it Black Friday. In the black, meaning they, these stores make a lot of money and whatnot. Okay? And, of course, you can look online at all these things about times past where people, where they would open the doors and these people would just run into the stores and just disgusting. Just disgusting. The wicked, through the pride of his countenance, countenance is the bodily, okay, will not seek after God. God is not in all his thoughts. No, because what is in their thoughts? I, 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 me, 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 covetousness. The object of covetousness is a reflection of what? Self. Just like idolatry is. Idolatry is the object of what? The reflection of self. Okay? That's what it is. All right? So, when you're being covetous, now people like the devils are like, well, Paul talks about where to covet, you know, earnestly the best gifts. But see... We wish to have the best from the Lord so that the Lord can give us that so we can share it with others. Our base is not I, 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 me, me, me. See? It's not a contradiction. Okay, when you go to, when Paul says, you know, covet earnestly the best gifts, but earn, uh, covet yet to prophesy. Okay? Prophesy today, you wicked heretic, charismatic heretic, wicked devil. Okay? Prophesying today is not like it was in the dispensation under the law. Prophesying today is someone who has the Lord within them, filled with the Holy Ghost. The Lord is that Spirit, our Father, Jesus Christ, speaking to you from the Word. That is prophesying today. Okay? All right? But when Paul says to covet the best gifts, it's so that we could, number one, be used of the Lord for His glory and to strengthen, edify, and encourage others. It's an act of selflessness, not selfishness, which is being promoted today and, of course, with Christianity. All right, let me get me started. His ways are always grievous. Thy judgments are far above out of His sight. As for all His enemies... <laughs> he puffeth at them. He has said in his heart, I shall not be moved. I shall never be in adver adversity. His mouth is full of cursing and deceit and fraud. Under his tongue is mischief and vanity. Like that one jerk Tom and his two little girly friends over there. Okay? Mouth is full of vanity, fraud, deceit, and cursing. Okay? And the people that are in this side chat there, they use profanity regularly without even a... Okay? Yeah. 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 Well, what do you expect from a Christian? Hmm? What do you expect? Okay? What do you expect? Back at 20, uh, Proverbs 24, verses 1 and 2 again. Be not thou envious against evil men, neither desire to be with them. For their hearts studieth destruction, and their lips talk of mischief. Here's another interesting thing that the Lord kind of uh, pointed out to me uh, today. In Ezekiel chapter 7, verses 10 on to verse 13. Check this out. Check this out. Behold the day. Behold, it is come. The morning is gone forth. The rod has blossomed. Pride hath budded. Violence has risen up into a rod of wickedness. Hmm. None of them shall remain, nor of their multitude, nor of any of theirs. Neither shall there be wailing for them. The time has come. The day draweth near. Let not the buyer rejoice, nor the seller mourn, for wrath is upon all the multitude thereof. You know, 
people with this wicked covetousness that they have, this idolatry that they have via covetousness, um, it's a form of judgment. It's a form of judgment. Well, you see, when you don't have God in all your thoughts, and no, you can't have God in your thoughts 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Okay, you, I mean, you can. We're, we're, our spirit and soul are housed in this sagging skin suit. Okay? Uh, not even Paul, the greatest saint of the church of God. He couldn't do it 24 hours a day, seven days a week. He had the Romans 7 expository video will be in the description box for you to contemplate on, okay? But when people are given over to that, it's a, it's a form of judgment. Look at today. Also look at Christianity with everything revolving around themselves. Okay? Verse 13. For the seller shall not return to that which is sold, although they were yet alive. For the vision is touching the whole multitude thereof, which shall not return, neither shall any strengthen himself in the iniquity of his life. And check this out. Verse 19 in Ezekiel 7. They shall cast their silver in the streets, and their gold shall be removed. Their silver and their gold shall not be able to deliver them in the day of the wrath of the Lord. They shall not satisfy their souls, neither fill their bowels, because it is the stumbling block of their iniquity. Silver and gold. Stumbling block of their iniquity, covetousness. Okay, very interesting. You, you, uh, what's that, Gerard Salente guy? That that potty mouth individual. But these guys who talk about right now, you know, get silver, get gold, gold and silver, gold and silver, which is scriptural currency, absolutely. But see, th there's a problem. And what is the problem? The problem is the redemption of the purchased possession in the time of Jacob's trouble. Look at that verse real quick. This is a little web of trail. They shall cast their silver in the streets, and their gold shall be removed. Their silver and their gold shall not be able to deliver them in the day of the wrath of the Lord. They shall not satisfy their souls, neither fill their bowels, because it is the stumbling block of their iniquity. Everyone's talking about silver and gold, silver and gold, you know, stock up on that. So when the economy crashes, you can take your troy ounce of silver or gold to the Walmart, and how are you going to exchange it for the price of your groceries? It's, it's not going to work. But during the time of Jacob's trouble, during the time of Jacob's trouble, the church of God is not on the earth. God is omniscient, omnipresent, Okay, that kind of stuff. Um, he's not going anywhere. The body of Christ is going somewhere. We're going to be redeemed, called up for the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay, but see, during the time of Jacob's trouble, Satan will bring about what? The mark of the beast that will be in their right hand or in their forehead. And you can read about this in Revelation chapters 13 and 14. Okay, Revelation chapter 13 and 14, anybody, and remember, remember, you filth, sleazy believists, okay, during the time of Jacob's trouble, it's faith and works. Eternal security is not there except for the 144,000 Jews, okay, all right, once saved, always saved is not there for the rest of the people except for the 144,000 Jews. It's not by grace through faith. Okay? It's not. All right? Don't be deceived by those idiots. Please. Okay? But in James chapter 5, verses 1 on verse 3, see, Satan is going to implement the mark of the beast, that no man might buy or sell, save those who had the mark and the number of his name, you know, in, the, in his right hand or in his forehead. Okay? WWW666, the number of the beast. World Wide Web. Okay? But, James chapter 5, verses 1 and verse 3. James! And incidentally, uh, you, you people, uh, who do not rightly divide the word of truth, uh, who's, who's the book of James written to? 
James 1. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting. The twelve tribes will, you know, there are twelve tribes today, but they're not pronounced as they will be during the time of Jacob's trouble. The book of James is written for the Jews during the time of Jacob's trouble. The Hebraic Jews during the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? Doctrinally, the book of James is not for us today. There are things, yes, that cross dispensational lines. Same with the book of Hebrews. But Hebrews and James specifically are books specifically written for the Hebraic Jews during the time of Jacob's trouble. Period. Okay? But, James 5, 1, 1 on to 3. Go to now ye rich men. Weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. Your riches are corrupted. And your garments are moth-eaten. Your gold and silver is canker. And the rust of them shall be a witness against you. And ye shall eat your flesh as it were fire. Ye have heaped treasure together for the last days. Gold and silver be cankered or, and rust? Gold and silver don't rust. What's, what's with that? It means that they're not going to be of any profit during... It's scriptural currency, yes. But during the time of Jacob's trouble, Satan is implementing the mark of the beast. And how effective is the mark of the beast if you got gold and silver? Gold and silver during the time of Jacob's trouble is not going to be anything because of the mark of the beast. Okay? All right? Gold and silver today, yeah, it's, it's, yes, it is worth something, absolutely. But see, people are saying to you that when, when the American economy goes and crashes, um, well, gold and silver, gold and silver. That's not going to work, people. Okay? It's not going to work the way that you are being informed that it's going to. Okay? It's not. It's not. All right? So I, I just want to just wanted to bring that up to you about that, okay? Especially in a day where covetousness is the modus operandi, okay? Back to Proverbs 24, verse 3. Through wisdom and unto man, he said, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. Job 28, 28. Through wisdom is an house builded. And by understanding, departing from evil, it is established. Proverbs 8. Proverbs 8. 32 unto 36. Now therefore hearken unto me, O ye children, for blessed are they that keep my ways. <coughs> Dear instruction. And be wise, and refuse it not. Blessed is the man that heareth me, waiting daily at my gates. That's going to come into play here in a little bit. Waiting at the posts of my doors. For whoso findeth me, findeth life, and shall obtain favor of the Lord. But he that sinneth against me, wrongeth his own soul. All they that hate me, love death. And John chapter 10. John chapter 10, verses 1, on to verse 5. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, and Jesus Christ is the door, you idiot. That's meant for a certain block. Oops. Yeah, you're not, uh, you have, uh, kind of disappeared from one, but we both know that you're busy on elsewhere. <laughs> of course. Okay. Yeah, of course. Okay. Of course. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice. And he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. <laughs> and when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them. And the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. The stranger will, not, will they not follow, 
but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. Let's read verses 7 on to verse uh, 14 now. Then said Jesus unto them. Uh, let's read uh, to verse 14. Verse 6. This parable spake Jesus unto them. But they understood not what the things they were which he spake unto them. That's because our Lord is making a reference unto the redemption of the purchased possession. Okay? Not rapture. Stop it. Stop it. Okay. Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers. But the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved, and he shall go out, go in, and out, go in, body of Christ saved, go out, for our redemption of the purchase possession, and find pasture. The thief cometh not but for to steal, and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But he that is an hireling and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming and leaveth the sheep and fleeth. And the wolf, wolf catcheth them and scattereth the sheep. The hireling fleeth because he is an hireling and careth not for the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and, am no, and know my sheep, and am known of mine. Back to Proverbs 24. Verse 4. And by knowledge shall the chambers be filled with all precious and pleasant riches. Let's read 3 and 4 now together. Through wisdom, fear of the Lord, is an house builded. And by understanding, departing from evil, it is established. And by knowledge, the result of true wisdom, fear of the Lord, and understanding, departing from evil, produces true knowledge. One that is not earthly, sensual, devilish. Okay? And by knowledge shall the chambers be filled with all precious and pleasant riches. We are part of the Lord's house, okay? That saying, well, they are of my house. Not talking about the building, but that we are part of him. We are part of his bones and of his flesh. We are the body of Christ. We are of his house. That's what that means, okay? All right? And for this, just one, ver one reference, just one verse. In Proverbs 20, verse 15. Proverbs 20, 15. There is gold and a multitude of rubies, but the lips of knowledge are a precious jewel. Yes, the lips of knowledge are a precious jewel. When they're based off of wisdom, the fear of the Lord, and understanding, departing from evil, which produces a knowledge that are a precious jewel. Hmm. Okay? Now, Verses 5 and 6 in Proverbs 24. A wise man is strong. Stop. Wise man. Look at 3 and 4 again. Don't look at me. Wisdom, understanding, knowledge. Okay? Wisdom, understanding, knowledge. Fear of the Lord, departing from evil, and a true knowledge based upon the fear of the Lord and, under and departing from evil. Okay? But remember... The wisdom of this world, the wisdom of man, philosophy, okay? And remember, Satan is a fan of man. He, he's all about flesh because he was cursed to eat dirt, flesh, all the days of his life, okay? The wisdom of this world is earthly, sensual, devilish. And what knowledge does that produce? Oh, philosophy in vain to speak. The, <laughs> philosophy and vain deceit okay all right but through wisdom is in house building and by understanding it is established and by knowledge shall the chambers be filled with all precious and pleasant riches a wise man 
someone who fears the Lord. Here we see wisdom equated with being wise. Okay? A wise man is strong. Yea, a man of knowledge increaseth strength. For by wise counsel thou shalt make thy war, and in the multitude of counselors there is safety. Right away it makes me think about Rehoboam, the son of Solomon. Okay, we've, there's a video somewhere where we talk about that. I can't offhand remember. But, um, you know, he went to the older uh, people who were alive when his father was, and they gave him sound counsel about how to answer Jeroboam, the son of Nebat. Okay? But he went to his clique, his buddies that he grew up with. And they say, hey, you tell them uh, my loins will be thicker than my father's and something like that. Okay? All right? Good example of that. But Proverbs 1. Proverbs 1. Verses 1 on verse 7. Proverbs 1. Verses 1 on verse 7. The Proverbs of Solomon the son of David, king of Israel, to know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding, the words of understanding, the words that will have you to depart from evil, okay? To receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, <gasps> judgment, oh boy, and equity, to give subtlety to the simple, to the young man, knowledge and discretion, a wise man will hear and will increase learning. And a man of understanding, departing from evil, shall attain unto wise counsels. And brethren who are also of the church of God, which is the ground and pillar, which is the church of the living God, the ground and pillar of truth. Okay? I get that backwards sometimes, but okay. To understand the proverb. And the interpretation, the words of the wise and their dark sayings. We talked about this earlier, okay, about how their dark sayings are not dark as hidden from us because we have the Lord, but the lost who can get a skimming of the scripture but not deep because they don't have the light, the Lord Jesus Christ, that lives in them permanently, okay? Right in verse 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools who say in their heart... There is no God. They are their own gods. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. And Proverbs 22. Proverbs 22. Verses 17 on to verse 24. Bow down thine ear. And hear the words of the wise. And apply thine heart to my knowledge. For it is a pleasant thing. If thou keep, the, keep them within thee. They shall withal be fitted in thy lips, that thy trust may be in the Lord. I have made known to thee this day, even to thee, have I not written? It is written. It is written. It is written. Okay. Have I not written to thee excellent things and counsels and knowledge, that I might make thee know the certainty of the words of truth? Every, uh, every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto those who put their trust in him. Words of the Lord are pure words, as purified in a furnace seven times. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord. What's the them? The words. The scriptures. The authorized version. Okay? Look, you twit. The seven languages that uh, this went through to the final and seventh purification of the language, English, yeah, yeah, it was written in the New Testament, was written in Koine Greek, okay, and in Aramaic, they say as well. But those passed the time that they were to give us the finished product, the, the Word of God in English, okay? This is the finished product. This is the perfect and errant given by inspiration word of God, preserved in English. This is what you use to translate in other, into other languages, you filthy devil. Okay? All right? Okay? Yea, hath God said, you Jesuit coadjutor? Mm -hmm. I won't, yeah, oh, yeah. 
Okay? That I might make, verse 21 again, that I might make thee know the certainty of the words of truth, that thou mightest answer the words of truth to them that send unto thee. Be ready always to give an answer of the reason of the hope that is in you. Not to answer every question, because a lot of people come with vain questions and just keep you going in circles. No, no, no. Someone asks you of the reason of, of the hope that is in you, and our hope is Jesus Christ, that you answer, of course. You don't have to answer all their questions, brethren. Don't forget that. Don't forget that. Rob not the poor, because he is poor. Neither oppress the afflicted in the gate. For the Lord will plead their cause and spoil the soul of those that spoiled them. Make no friendship with an angry, angry man, and with a furious man thou shalt not go. Let's read verse 25. Lest thou learn his ways and get a snare to thy soul. Hmm. Hmm. Very interesting. Very interesting. Very interesting. Now, Proverbs 24 Verse 7. Wisdom is too high for a fool. The fool says in his heart there is no God. So the fear of the Lord is too high for a fool because the fool says in his heart there is no God. They are their own God. He openeth not his mouth in the gate. Hmm. But yet these fools are blah, 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 full of chatter, full of talk. Let's have a live stream. Okay? All right? They're full of talk. They're full of words. But yet, the distinction here, wisdom is too high for a fool. He openeth not his mouth in the gate. The gate. Old Testament significance there. Proverbs 31 Verses, verse 30, uh, verse 23. Her husband is known in the gates when he sitteth among the elders of the land. And look across the page there to verses 8 and 9 in Proverbs 31. See, in Old Testament times, they would go to the front of the gate. If they, and we're going to look at an example of this in the book of Job, okay? They would go to the gates, and there they would be to uh, do their business, their judgment, and stuff like that. Going to the front, so when people would come in, okay? All right? That's very synonymous and significant, especially within the Old Testament, okay? Especially within the Old Testament, okay? But, verses 8 and 9, Open thy mouth for the dumb in the cause of all such as are appointed to destruction. Open thy mouth, judge righteously, judge righteous judgment, according to scripture, okay? And plead the cause of the poor and needy. Hmm. But see, these enemies of our Lord, they don't do that. No. If anything, what they do they encourage the people as they're going off, going headlong to fall off of a cliff to their death. They encourage them in their sin, just like all the sleazy believists do, just like the Catholics do, just like these sick, disgusting Calvinists do, just like the morons do, the Jehos do. Okay? All right? Job 29. Job 29, verse 7. On to verse 17. Job 29, verses 7 on to verse 17. When I went out to the gate through the city. When I went out to the gate through the city. Okay? Now, I we, we've talked about the book of Job here. Um, the links will be in the description box, and we're not going to get off onto that, okay? But he went through the city to the gate. The gate. At the entering of the gate. Okay? Lot did the same thing. Okay? Very significant. Also, you read about that in um, Ruth. Uh, um, uh, what, what was his name? Boaz went to the elders in the, in the front, in the gate. 
Okay? Very synonymous, very significant, especially in Old Testament times. Okay? When I went out to the gate through the city, when I prepared my seat in the street, see, the enemy meets them up there to encourage them to go on and sin. But those who are of the Lord meet them before they get into trouble, before they can come into the city and get messed up. Okay? Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Do you, do you see the tie in there? About how we, the saints, the church and living God, we are supposed to be the ones in the gates, you know, to, but to be there to, to be used to the Lord, okay? To help people out, okay? The young men saw me and hid themselves, and the aged arose and stood up. The princes refrained talking and laid their hand upon them, their hand on their mouth. The nobles held their peace, and their tongue cleaved to the roof of their mouth. When the ear heard me, then it blessed me, and when the eye saw me, it gave witness to me. Why? Because I delivered the poor that cried, and the fatherless, and him that had none to help him. The blessing of him that was ready to perish came upon me, and I caused the widow's heart to sing for joy. I put on righteousness, and it clothed me. My judgment was as a robe and a diadem. People who are afraid of judgment are in sin. Okay? Simply put, they say, don't judge me. Right, no one can judge me but the Lord like that stupid cross-dressing Calvinist. They're going to hell, deceiving people. I'm making a mockery of the Lord. Okay? Lost people are afraid of judgment. Saved people, we're going to be at the judgment seat of Christ. But see, we judge ourselves through Scripture so we don't be chastised as the world is. Okay? People who are afraid of judgment or don't like judgment are lost or a brother who is messed up or a sister who is messed up. Okay? I was eyes to the blind and feet was I to the lame. I was a father to the poor and the cause which I knew not I searched out. And I break the jaws of the wicked and pluck the spoil out of his teeth good picture of what we, the church of the living God, is supposed to be. We are supposed to be the ones in the gates, warning people of, you know, don't go near the, the door of her house. Hey, watch out! You're running for a cliff! Our enemies! Oh, don't worry, don't worry about it. You just believe you're saved. Don't worry about it. Go on. You No, you shouldn't, but don't worry about it. Live a little. Hey, that, those guys are being too extreme anyway. My buttocks, man. Proverbs 24, verse 8. He that deviseth to do evil shall be called a mis mischievous, 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 mischievous. You will correct me later. <laughs> and hey, 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 hey. Just so we all know, there's the word. There's no helps there. <laughs> I love you, brother. <laughs> all right. He that deviseth to do evil shall be called a mis mischievous or mischievous person. Romans 1. Romans 1. Romans 1. 29 to 32. Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, the Lord of Morris, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whispers, backbiters, Haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, 
these these guys they just come up with this stuff out of nowhere, okay? Because they are of their father, the devil. Okay. Disobedient to parents without understanding. Sleazy believists. It's funny that there are some Catholics out there who are more apt to have understanding, trying to depart from evil, at least on the outset, when the sleazy believers go head first into it. You guys make me sick. Okay? Without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Because why? Misery loves company. <laughs> yeah. 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 They want you to go to hell with them. Psalm 11. Psalm 11. Not Chronicles. Psalm 11. 5 on the 7. What is that? Sorry. The, the Lord trieth the righteous, but the wicked, and him that loveth violence, his soul hateth. To speak contrary to the truth, to give to you another Jesus and another gospel, is violence. Everyone is trying to press their way into the kingdom of God today. All these Christians. Upon the wicked he shall rain snares. Getting like uh, the, the judgment upon them of covetousness. Idolatry, huh? Upon the wicked he shall rain snares, fire and brimstone. And a horrible tempest. This shall be the portion of their cup. Yeah, your best life now, guys. For the righteous Lord loveth righteousness. His countenance doth behold the upright. And of course, Psalm 7, we've got to go there, uh, 11 and 12. God judgeth the righteous, and God is angry with the wicked every day. Hey, God's not angry today. You, shut up. Shut up. Yes, he is. You reject the true gospel one time? You are a child of wrath. You are a child of disobedience. Okay? God does not love you unconditionally. That is a lie. Okay? You want God's love? You have to go the way He is called, the way of the cross. You go any other way? We've already read it in John 10. You're a thief and a robber. Okay? God is angry at the wicked. That crosses every <laughs> dispensation. Okay? Of course, except for uh, the seventh and final dispensation, which is eternity, where there is no sin. Okay? God judgeth the righteous, and God is angry with the wicked every day. If he turn not, he will wet, W-H-E-T, like a spit stone. He will wet his sword. He hath bent his bow and made it ready. Proverbs 24 Verse 9. The thought of foolishness is sin. Fool says in his heart there is no God. Foolishness is thinking, behaving, as if you say in your heart there is no God. Look at these sleazy believists. Look at the Catholics. Look at the Catholics, man. some of these Baptists. Look at some of these King James Babylonian Christians. Especially the Rockmanites. Look at them. With their lips they wouldn't say there is no God. But ye shall know them by their fruits. Okay? The thought the thought of wickedness is sin. And Proverbs 14 9 Proverbs 14, 9, fools make a mock at sin. But among the righteous there is favor. Grace. The ones that the Lord deems righteous because you've gone the way that he is called. 
The thought of foolishness is sin. See, even thoughts are sin. Sin is so enormous. But see, our God who filleth all things is greater than all things. God, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, is greater than sin. Greater, bigger, more powerful. I, I absolutely. Okay? Sin is, sin is huge. Because right there, the thought of foolishness is sin. To think as if you are saying in your heart there is no God. To behave foolishly. Okay? See, Christianity makes a mock at sin. And they treat sin lightly. What do they say of us saints? You take it too seriously. You can't take sin seriously enough, boy. You can't. But see, therein is grace. Therein lies grace. Which the fake gracers know nothing about. Which Catholics know nothing about. Which Satan and his church, Roman Catholicism, and all her whorish daughters know nothing about. Sin is powerful. But our Lord is greater than sin. Romans 6. Romans 6. Got a got a expository video on that. Okay? Check that out. The thought of foolishness is sin, and the scorner is an abomination to men. Isaiah 55. Isaiah 55. Verses 6 on to verse 9. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Today, this dispensation, it is truly the easiest dispensation to come to the Lord that He may save you. The hard part is, as I constantly remind you, is you got to get over yourself. Or you go to Christianity and leap over the requirements and just go straight to belief. Hence, making yourself a false convert. Seek ye the Lord while He may be found. Call ye upon Him while He is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thought, his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Praise the Lord. A God who thinks like me or even worse, like you. <laughs> I can resist that. And see, Christianity has made a God in their own image. They they think that God is just like them. Hence they get up there and do a bro hug with the Lord. Oh be quiet. You make me sick. Okay? For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. Praise the Lord. If God was like me, if God was like you, oh, oh, oh. look at them goosebumps. You can't see that. Oh, I got, I got goosebumps thinking about that, man. Whereas the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, my thoughts than your thoughts. Psalm 50. Psalm 50 for that. And then we'll be done. Just a quick little video today. That's stuff to do today. Psalm 50. Psalm 50. Verses 16. On to verse 22. But unto the wicked God saith, What hast thou to do to declare my statutes? Or that thou shouldest take my covenant in thy mouth? Seeing thou hatest instruction, and castest my words behind thee. Oh yeah, because it's, 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 um, 
It's what you choose. It's your prerogative. Okay? It's what you want. Okay? It's your preference. Find a Bible that suits your preference. And you can go to hell. Okay? Go to hell. With a Bible that suits your preference. See, this, this is not something, this is not preference. This is what God has preserved. You want what God really said? Well, it's not in my language. That you use this. The Hebrew, which one? And the Greek, which one? Well, the one written in Koine. Uh, you know, there are many 28 or 29 editions of Nestle Alon, at least 18 to 19, anywhere in there of the Textus Receptus. Okay, which one, Andy? Hmm? Which one? Oh, the one that's Sinaiticus Maticanus? Yeah. In the possession of the people you work for! Yeah. 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 Seeing thou hatest instruction and castest my words behind thee. When thou sawest the thief, we already read it in John 10, then thou consentest with him and hast been partaker with adulterers. Thou givest thy mouth to evil and thy tongue frameth deceit by preaching another Jesus and another gospel. Thou sittest and speak, speakest against thy brother. Thou slanderest thine own mother's son. Here it is. These things hast thou done, and I kept silence. Thou thoughtest that I was altogether such an one as thyself. Christianity, y'all, Christians. Not saints. There's a distinction. If you're a saint, you want to call yourself a Christian, I love you. That's your problem. Okay? That's your problem. Okay? But... Christianity has made God into their own image. And they worship themselves as their own God. They would never say it with their mouth. But it's, it's right there. These things hast thou done, and I kept silence. Thou thoughtest that I was altogether such a one as thyself. But I will reprove thee, and set them in order before thine eyes. Now consider this. Ye that forget God, lest I tear you in pieces and there be none deliver, to deliver. Let's read verse 23. Whoso offereth praise glorifieth me, and him that ordereth his conversation aright, will I shew the salvation of God, dispensation of difference. That's going to be it for this little video. I just like I said, um, uh, the Lord do with this as he will. If, uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully, get something out of this video okay but like I said I just I wanted to share this with you with what the Lord shared with me today I just wanted to share this with you because today is the 24th here in America you know is this stupid Black Friday nonsense and they got Cyber Monday and this silly season is going to commence Unless certain individuals prod and poke, I'm ready if they do. I'm ready if you do. But unless certain individuals prod and poke about the next coming month, I intend to leave that alone. Okay? My stands on what's coming have been made painfully obvious. Okay? And also been made painfully obvious through the scriptures. Okay? So I'm not going to be sidetracked by that. Now, if a certain select group of King James Bible believing Christians want to go ahead and stir up the hornet's nest, okay. Then then, sure. But other than that, I'm just gonna leave that alone. We got bigger fish to fry than your paganism. That's one thing I'm not going to be silent about. Paganism. But 
I'm going to leave that alone. So. Anyway, that's going to be it for this video. Thank you for watching this if you do. I uh, love you. Um, also, very quick, I want to mention this to the brethren. Um, those of you, brethren, whose number I have, um, I, I've said this before, but got to be more diligent on my behalf to reach out and call the brethren. I, you know, I keep, I keep the phone in here in Brother Alexander's room because, you know, it's very easy. It's very easy for you to get one of these hell phones and you go, you know, the going by and whatnot. And the next thing, next thing you know, you've wasted four hours of your day sitting there like, it's horrible. But because of what the Lord has done and where he has placed me, it comes in handy. But I, I, I try to put distance there so it doesn't become, you know, unhealthy as it were. But at the same time, by the, t by the time um, I come into Brother Alexander's room here and I look and say, oh, <laughs> wow, okay, wow, that's, and I've missed calls and stuff like that. I've said this before. I really got really to gotta buckle down on that and, you know, set aside, make time to reach out to the brethren. You know, I've got a uh, uh, brother in Georgia, a brother in Ohio, a brother in uh, uh, North Dakota, a uh, brother in um, uh, New Jersey, a uh, brother from overseas, several brethren from overseas. You know, unfortunately, we can, we, a couple of us from overseas, yeah, we can do Skype, and that's a good thing. Kind of start doing that, and at least try to establish at least a once a week thing for at least, at least a half an hour, at least. It's like, hey, brother, how you doing? You know, I, I, and that's, that's a fault of mine. I, uh, one thing leads to another, and, and I'm not making excuses. One thing leads to another, and... I, I fall. I falter at that. Please forgive me, brethren. My brothers, my sisters, Church of the Living God, for those of you whose number I have, um, forgive me for lacking in reaching out to you. Please forgive me. That, that's, that's my bad, and I apologize. need to be diligent and vigilant about that and establish you know I don't want to say well I'm going to call you on Thursday because the way it is with me Thursday will come and go it's like oh, I didn't call brother so and so no that, that doesn't work I set myself up to fall <laughs> do stuff like that but at least make the conscious effort you know, sit out there with my wife, and, and those of you who know, they'll sit there and it's like, hey, say hello to my wife, and my wife will say hello. That's because we're one flesh. That's how that works. Most of the time. Uh, most of the time. So, um, Especially, too, with the season coming up, um, a lot of saints during this season get lonely. And we need to be there for each other. Starting with here. So... Anyway, thank you for watching this if you do. I love you. And hopefully this, hopefully the Lord gives you something out of this. See you in the next video. Have a wonderful weekend.